Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Capital Asset Management Committee meeting with a joint meeting with the Finance Committee Tuesday, March 5th here at 6.30 at the Town Hall. I'll remind everyone that these meetings are audio and video recorded for your viewing pleasure. I will start with introductions to my left. Stan Casidlo. Ed Smith, Finance. Marie Lambert, Finance Committee. Uh, Larry Clausen, Finance Committee. Ryan McMahon, School Committee. Eric Eldridge, Select Board. Thank you, everyone. Welcome to the Finance Committee. Thank you guys for coming out this evening and doing this joint meeting with us. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Kat. Actually, but before we do, do we need oh, to open the, finance, to open the finance Committee? Yes, well, yes so, please. So also, good, good evening on behalf of the Finance Committee. Uh, it is still Tuesday, March 25th, and we are still um, just past 6.30, and, um, and uh, we've already made introductions. So with that, I think we're, we're, we're open and good to go. Good. All right. Thank you. Now we'll turn it over to Kat. All right. Good evening. So we're here this evening to present the FY25 capital budget uh, as recommended by Capital Asset. Uh, our goal is to get feedback from you today from finance specifically and answer any questions that you have before we present to the select board. And included in your packet, I do have a memo that pretty much will summarize my presentation, but I'll just kind of walk us through some highlights. And if it's okay with chairs, maybe leave questions to the end. Or if it's pressing, just feel free to interrupt me, it, wherever your preference is. May I ask where the soup coupon will be? It was on your agenda. Yeah, it, I should do it now. Um, but that is on the agenda. And um, if it's okay with everyone here, we can do that now. Yes, and I'm fine with that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Crawford, if you'd state your name and address, please. Billy Crawford, 83 Frost Road. I want to thank the Finance Committee for again offering, continuing to offer citizens' time. And I'm also happy to see that the Capital Asset Management Committee is continuing to collaborate with the Finance Committee. I assume that no new debt will be suggested this evening. I hope not, because the new middle schools, we all know, will soon be coming on, on uh, hitting taxpayers' bills pretty soon. So I hope we're not taking on any more debt. We take a little thunder, our, our town manager, at the last select board meeting, I saw that the video of the town manager, Lozell's provided budget pie charts showing where Tingsboro finance, uh, Tingsboro funds actually go. They are excellent. The summary chart that begins with general management has long been a favorite of mine. The new improved chart provides even more detail. So the, the charts will be a good starting point. So then if a person would want to, they can do a deeper dive into the budget for a particular line item in a category. So I thought those were excellent. I'd also like to thank Selectman Eldridge for continuing to push for increased transparency. I heard that was your, your push to do that. That's great. And I know our town manager, he, he certainly proved to be very supportive of transparency. As everyone knows, that's very important to me. Also, as long as I'm able to attend an annual town meeting, I will ask about the current Norris Road Middle School debt payment budget amount. I'm going to ask it at every annual town meeting, okay? And I, so I want you to be prepared to answer, is the town share of that debt obligation being met every year for the next 30 years? And I hope the Finance Committee will keep this on your docket to always be making sure that that happens over the next 30 years because we can't let it fall by the wayside. That was a promise made to the people of this town and that should be kept, carved in stone. Thank you very much. Very nice boy, thank you. Right, yes, thank you. thank you, Mr. Crawford. All right, we'll turn it back over to Kat. The slides to walk us through. So we'll begin just briefly talking about the process this year. Um, on the screen, I have a timeline that has been adjusted for our actual dates that we met beginning in October and bringing us all the way today, March 5th. We'll go 
goes a little bit more detail next slide. So the process is a little different this year. The committee uh, approved a process where the town manager would review, vet, um, and meet with department heads, and then throughout the mo last couple of months, present the present the, the recommended budget to the to this um, capital asset. We did use the guidelines that was pre previously approved in physical years, just to, um, sorry the criteria to give departments some guidelines. So we did finance. Uh, we met with the finance department to review the current financial situation, including available funding sources and borrowing capacity to identify clear parameters for the, the requests. So at the initial meeting with capital asset, um, we, 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 we talked about the funding and this year was a little different as we know, we, it was, we presented the finance committee that we weren't really ready to borrow, knowing that the, the looming school debt, um, but also knowing that a lot of debt was gonna fall off next year. So really narrowed down our funding opportunities. So we had four meetings, um, and at each step of the way, addressed any feedback we had, um, that the committee had, and then the town manager and I sat with department heads and sort of, again, had them sharpen their pencils to really identify the needs. So the total funding request this year, about $1.8 million, as shown here. Obviously, recognizing that we weren't be able to fund all of these requests, a lot of these were on the um, the five-year plan, and some of them were new requests. And again, so we did this year. We were planning to use three hundred and twenty thousand dollars of free cash, and then the remainder of the ARPA funds, American Rescue Plan Act, which would total two hundred and forty-eight thousand. We did so all of the unexpended, appropriate appropriated funds from our, using ARPA. We did set those aside to kind of cover any projects right now that were in process that we didn't know would go over budget. So it gave us a little bit of a wiggle room. So the FY25 recommended capital budget. So we did, again, after presenting the initial request to capital asset, the town manager I did and I did sit with the department heads to kind of really kind of sharpen our pencils and figure out what we could do with the limited budget that we had. So you can see in the column we have requested amount, which is what the departments requested. And on the right, the, on the, all the way to the right, we have what we recommended. Uh, so we'll see a couple of vehicles in there, like a pickup truck, and then um, for both the fire and highway. We are gonna prioritize an electric vehicle. However, we're gonna, no matter what, it really depends on the price, but this is the parameters, this is the dollar amount that we're going with. We will focus on getting a, 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 um, a fuel efficient vehicle, no matter what, just because we are a member of the green communities. So I just wanna put that out there. And then just this, this is the five-year plan. So you can see in FY26, we did push a lot of the projects there, um, some large dollar amounts. And that is with the hope that, again, we know a lot of debt is rolling off in FY26, so we hope that we have some borrowing capacity. Again, we're gonna reassess that in the coming years, but there you can see $2.1 million worth of requests. Again, some large projects, um, large capital items like an engine two replacement and uh, some highway vehicles. And we thought it'd be worth mentioning to finance that we've been discussing some additional funding considerations for what we call some of these unexpected capital expenses. As you can see in FY26, we're pushing out yet again some of these large things that are a public safety can, or need, like a fire engine, in the event that something was to happen in the meantime before we fund that, and then the lead time to, per, to actually receive that vehicle, say the engine blows. We are looking at what kind of mechanism can we have to sort of fund that in the event something was like that was gonna happen, or if the, the elevator breaks at the high school. And so 
this is just an option. We're still talking about it as, as a committee, or the committee is still talking about it, but one option would be to use a, or authorize a fixed amount of free cash um, as a capital discretionary project and set clear parameters of how that funding is actually accessed. So it would just be for capital expenses only, somewhat to just serve as that um, intermediary between when we can actually purchase these things, hoping that, I mean, it, assuming it's an engine, just like in the actual, the fire engine, not the purchase of a fire engine, but something like that in the event we could kind of get through that for a period of time. Uh, so that's just one option that we're considering right now. Um, hopefully we'd bring it back to this committee to kind of get any feedback that you have or if you have any feedback this evening. And that's, that's all I have. All right, I'll open up to the uh, start of that one. Finance Committee. Questions, anybody? I, I, I got I, mean, I like the way you actually broke that down and you cut back on some of it. Um, the question I have, how long is it going to take you to get the free cash certified? I know last year we had a problem with, you know, there was things on the, <clears throat> on the town warrant articles, you had to pull them because the free cash wasn't certified. So it's going to be an ongoing problem not having the free cash certified. Free cash will be certified by this town meeting. The issue that led to the free cash being not certified has been addressed. The only remaining piece for the state to consider our free cash is the annual audit, which is in process and will be completed in the next two weeks or so, well ahead of town meeting. So free cash this year will be certified and that won't be a lingering issue. So I guess I have, I have one question. So, so going back to the earlier slide, um, actually if you keep going backwards, it was a summary uh, uh, there. So you've got requested amount and then you've got town manager's recommendations and the town man manager's recommendations, I'm assuming, are to come in you know, at that number of 568. Um, but on several items, you're not meeting the requested amount. So my question is, where did those requested amounts come from and what happens when you know, somebody thinks a pickup truck costs almost $85,000 and we're saying, nope, we're gonna get one for $45,000 and if we approve that and figure out, nope, we can't get it for 45, there's that 85 came from somewhere, how, how, does, how does that, how is that handled? I'll say Good question. <coughs> Maybe just going through them real quick. So for the, the Chevy Silverado, that would, the requested amount was for an electric Silverado. Okay. Um, that was available on a, on a lot and we got a quote for it. However, after having discussions with the highway department um, and then this in our capital committee, we realized that one, there are more affordable electric vehicles available, um, whether it be a truck or an, an SUV, and then understanding whose vehicle is replacing, which was the foreman's and what he does the day to day. Does he need, does he need a pickup truck? Can he use, an example, we have a lot of Ford Escapes would that work? So at least the 45,000 will get us, we've received a couple of quotes. Um, so at least it will get us to a point where he, we can replace that vehicle and it will work for that, for the foreman. Okay. But yes, yeah, so we've sort of refined that. And then the next, uh, I would, Norris Road, we received extra uh, chapter 90 funding. I believe that's correct, and so that money will go towards us. So even a portion already prior in the request amount, 31,000 was going to be funded using Chapter 90, and then the state gave us an additional additional Chapter 90 money as a result of, I believe, for the lack of better words, a millionaire tax. Yeah. Uh, so we did receive extra money that will cover that. So nothing, the scope of that project has not changed. And then for the the police request for flooring, there was actually, let me see, we'll go back to a couple of slides. There was about five requests for a lot of um, interior upgrades. And what we are doing is the select board approved a feasibility um, or an assessment of the fire and police, which will cost 81,000. We're using ARPA funds to fund that. 
and that will really help us identify what needs to be done in that building um, whether it's worth doing some of these uh, you know upgrades like bathroom repairs um, window replacements or do we want to wait towards if there's a time where we can actually um, we can actually build a new police station so that will give us like a map um, cost estimates and we sort of can plan because these are all all right, we identify that we need to do all these things in this year, but realistically, we don't know if we have to. There might be other things that we can do. So that would be for the, both the police and fire station. And I, got, go. I got another question, too. If you go back to that slide you know, that was just up. Okay, so there's no pickup truck for $65,000 on there, but on the other slide, you approved the $65,000 for a pickup truck. What kind of pickup truck? So well, great not, question. See, now it's showing up there. Yep. Uh, so this was actually a FY, oops, sorry, an FY26 capital request. Uh, we can see in that column that this was recommended to be funded this year because it will serve two two purposes. One being the truck was on the FY on the capital plan to be replaced in FY26. Um, it's a 20-year-old pickup truck. It does respond to emergencies. Um, the assistant fire chief uses that as well. In addition, we would um, like to use that truck for our, um, our, our maintenance craftsman who uses his own personal truck now to actually go to all the buildings, do maintenance work, um, and ideally we'd, he would be plowing, say, the town hall parking lot. He would be, and he transports a lot of things already in his personal vehicle, which we, we'd like to him to be able to use a town vehicle to do that and then we can actually ask him to do more than what he's doing already so that would that vehicle will just be transferred and then we would replace that vehicle so, so that truck will be used by the town hall more or less town hall maintenance department not the, but you have it on the fire departments so the the old truck which was like a 25th Oh, so you got to take that. And 2005 truck, yep. You, so, so you got to move that over to Sean Keegan. Yes, exactly. Okay, so he won't okay. be using his own personal truck right, right. now. I see. So you're going to get this fire department, new truck, the fire department will give Sean the truck for the stuff he does around between the buildings, moving lumber. Huh? Exactly. Yep. So that was the purpose, and it kind of fit within the, the budget that we were trying to. And, and also part of that was looking at what the fiscal 26 requests were. The fire department's next two really large requests are a new pumper and a new ladder. And so while this year we were able to include that without doing any additional borrowing, it made sense for us to take an item that we know is going to need to re be replaced in the next year or two, take care of it now, serve a separate function at t in town, and not have to worry about that on top of uh, you know, 450, probably closer to $500,000 pumper next year. Okay. And then just lastly on the Commission on Disabilities request for Littlefield Library accessibility upgrades. This was sort of, the 42,000 was sort of a catch-all to address some of the issues identified um, from the 2021 transition plan. This 25,000 will still cover a lot of the upgrades that need to be done. The 42 would have just got us the additional. Um, for example, just the, the ramp to get into the building. Now we've been using it for the Festival of Trees, so it would be nice to be able to allow something a little bit more accessible for the public, and we can use that building moving forward. And then for just you know committee meetings as well. So it'd be like to replace the ramp, um, I think bathroom upgrades, and a few other things. So it would still get us pretty far in terms of what needs to be done in that building, or at least get us closer. And that we did talk to, and the commission was okay with the request for twenty-five thousand as well. Okay. All right. Any, any additional questions? Mr. Chair, if I could, if I Absolutely. could add a couple things. Please. Um, so, just to, to clarify, so there's no new debt um, this year. We haven't had debt. Uh, from capital in three years because we've been lucky enough to have ARPA funds. There are $3.7 million of federal funds that we've been using for our capital acquisitions over the last three years and, and then some. Um, so that money's gone. So we, we've gone through that money. 
and we need to start planning for as we talked about there's more coming so we need to start planning for our debt there, there will be more debt more than just what's there from the school but we need to start uh, thinking about what that needs to look like so one of the things that I think is important is that we've been putting money to stabilization accounts so debt stabilization we need to start factoring into there's capital stabilization that we've been putting into so that uh, to build up those rainy day funds when we knew we wouldn't we're not going to have ARPA anymore um, so I think it's important for us to start planning for that I know uh, the Finance Committee was really uh, concerned about taking on any debt and I'm we're gonna have to loosen those reins starting next year because uh, we don't we no longer have that ARPA crutch and it's just a matter of we need to be methodical about it and think about it so that we don't have big spikes in it and and make sure we, we think about it so um, I think it's important for people to understand that um, the other is Kat had talked about the assessment that we're doing for fire and police we're using ARPA funds so that we can map out the next five ten years for those buildings they've been somewhat neglected over the last five years or so because we were hoping to get public safety buildings or a building put in place and that's not happening um, but we still need to make sure that we're taking care of our public safety people and that they have um, the right buildings to work from so we're investing some money to understand, okay, what can we do with those buildings and how do we best map out the next five, 10 years so that um, rather than $100,000 for flooring or some of these other things that we're sitting there saying, here's how we would phase those things in in order to make sure that everybody's safe, that the building is meeting its purposes, but that we're planning uh, our finances appropriately. So I just, I, I think it was, Important to kind of mention a couple of those things that are in there um, that are a little bit nuanced. Okay. And the only thing I would ask of the Finance Committee is we did put the option out there to put some funds aside um, that would allow us to do big repairs if need be. Like if the, ele if the elevator at the elementary school went down in the middle of the year we have nothing to fix that. So, or like we were saying, the engine in the fire engine. Um, what are your thoughts as far as that? Well, how was that handled in the past? That, that could happen at any time back. How was it handled in the past? And I, I really don't think it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was Probably not well. well. Yeah. <laughs> It might have been handled, and, and what we're trying to do is be proactive in thinking about what could happen and, you know, these things that did happen. We kind of winged it, and sometimes, you know, you're, you're, you're leveraging things from other towns. Um, we just want to make sure that we're proactive in looking at those things. We're not looking to spend the money, but we're looking at it by saying, geez, if something happens mid-year and we can't, you know, something really needs to happen before we can authorize it at town meeting, do we have a mechanism? I think we're still trying to figure out what sort of statutory ways in which we can address that um, to give us that flexibility while still maintaining the controls. We don't want it to just be in a, you know, a slush fund or something like that. It really has to be well thought out for a specific purpose. And you know that's why we were sitting there saying, gee, is there a better way? I don't think we have an answer yet. We just looked at it and said, it's a challenge and we need to come up with a way to do that. And I think where it's related to finance, it would be good for you folks to perhaps be- Well, I think the hardest part, well, I think the hardest part, if you have a fund, say you have capital, I mean, the, uh, the free cash, and that you're right, it's going towards capital assets. If you put $100,000 aside for an emergency cough or for something like that, who's gonna make the decision what's an emergency? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You, you can say, oh, this, this broke, it's an emergency. We gotta take that money and fix this. Well, I would, I would assume it would be the capital asset committee and then approved by the board of selectmen. And the finance committee. And, uh, and we could, you know I mean? we could write that any way we want. can't just be one board making that decision because right. everybody's idea of an emergency is going to be different. Correct. You know, one guy can say, oh, we need new soccer balls. Let's take money out. That's an emergency. The kids can't play soccer. Or an elevator. That's an emergency. That's hands down. You know what I mean? But we need, we need some kind of governing body but, to and, and that's kind a of tri board maybe to figure out how that money is going to be spent and what is what justifies an emergency. 
Mm -hmm. well, I think that was what we were trying to figure out. Right. And, and looking at we're... how do we do that, we, what are other towns doing in these types of situations, and is there a model that we can work from? You know, we don't want to reinvent the wheel, particularly if there's something that's already, um, you know, is covered under mass law and is okay. Um, we'd like to leverage that, and I think we're still exploring what sort of options we have there. But I think it's just important that you folks obviously would be part of that process, um, but we're still trying to figure that out unless you say, ah, you know what, no big deal, we'll just, we'll just wing it. Um, I think looking at the folks that we had uh, on the board, it was, yeah, we should probably come up with a way so that we're not so reactionary and we have some sort of a mechanism to address the true emergencies that, that may come about. Right. And what, <coughs> excuse me, but more of a repair than a purchase. Yes. And I think that's really what well, we're focusing it on. It could be both. It you know could I mean? be both. Something could be Correct. broken beyond repair and it's, it turns into a purchase. Something could be repaired. Like a chiller. I mean, $100,000 to repair a chiller. I mean, that's, that's heating and air conditioning. Yes. So my and on the chiller that's up there, um, just so everybody knows, that's a $380,000 capital asset request that's been on there for about five years. We've been waiting for it to die at the elementary school. Right. Um, left field, who's working on the middle school, actually sent somebody over there to look at it for us. With that $61,000 repair, we're going to get another 10 to 12 years out of that chiller. So that's a no-brainer. You do in it, in my opinion. Yeah, um, you do it. So, and thank you to Left Field for right for doing that for us. Right. Um, but those are also things that we look at when we're looking at the capital asset too. Is we, you know, Dr. Flanagan. Um, just saved us 10 years on that, hopefully. Yeah, because an elevator, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I said chiller, I know about chillers. Yes. An elevator, no, I know you push the button, it goes up and down. Correct. A chiller I can repair. Yes. Not, not an elevator. Um, <clears throat> but if we only have one elevator and that goes down in any one of our public buildings, it right. needs to be repaired. It needs to be repaired. And right. some of these are 20, 20 years old. Right. Um, well, so, I mean, and we're just using that as an example, but there could be a million right. other things. I don't that. know if you even replace elevators. I mean, you, you go into hotels in Boston, the elevator's probably 50, 60, 70 years old. Yeah. Yeah. But you eventually I mean? you run out of parts. That's the problem. Oh, this elevator. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but it could be anything. It could be the heat and air conditioning unit in this building. It could be whatever. Right. Um, but just to have the ability not to sweat it out through your normal operating budget and trying to figure out how you're gonna pay for that. Right, I agree. Yeah, the key is the flexibility. Like we don't wanna to wait to town meeting or call a special town meeting just to be able to appropriate the money. But we agreed that you know, there needs to be those checks. So we, mm -hmm. people need to I be able to- I think we need to decide an amount that goes into that discretionary fund. Absolutely. And who has control of it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think we all, we're pretty sure that you know, the, the tri-board should vote on it, the expenditure. Mm -hmm. and. Then we're going to just decide on amount that goes into that discretionary fund. Did you have a uh, recommended amount, Mr. Eldridge? No, I don't think we had. We, we, uh, we, we floated out some numbers. We floated, we floated 50. We floated 100. I, I, <coughs> until I know like what the process is going to be, I don't know what a number I would feel comfortable with. I, I also don't know. Uh, what sort of limitations we would have on it to be able to use it for something else that's non-capital that was an emergency that, you know, if I sit there and say, well, you know what, we put in 100, but eh, you know what, I'd like to bring that down to 50 for next year because I need 50 in, you know, some other stabilization account or, so, or something else. Um, without knowing what our options are, I don't, I don't think we got to that. But we know it's, it can't be a big number. It, no. it wasn't, right. it needs to be a... I think 50 would be a good discretionary number because that should cover most repairs. I mean, yeah, even if you've got a repair that's 70 or 80, you could take 20 or 30 out of a general fund instead of pulling 80 out of a general fund. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that, Colin? Yeah, yeah, and also this, the way that we're looking at it right now, to Kat's point about the flexibility, is something like a stabilization fund is not realistic because that requires a town meeting vote to appropriate. However, to the point about having some flexibility, if this committee, through its capital appropriations, recommended to town meeting, say a, a project line item that was $50,000 for emergency repairs 
it could be written into the item that it's subject to a vote of the tribe board or however you all craft that. And then every year you'd have the ability to change that amount. It'd be an annual appropriation. So if you did $50,000 for fiscal 25's capital budget and spent zero of it, you wouldn't need to do another appropriation in fiscal 26 because Money's capital projects don't roll back to the general fund. On the other hand, if you used all 50 in fiscal 25, you would have another opportunity in preparing the recommendation for fiscal 26 to determine what that amount would be. That's just the, that's the, the one option that we've seen used in other communities. Town Council's weighing in on what other options exist, but to me, that's the one that gives the community the most flexibility and addresses that flexibility that we would need in the, in the event of an emergency. It's a lot easier to schedule a tri board meeting than it is to call a special town meeting. Well, in, in general, I like that concept a lot. I, it would, it would, it's hard to argue against the idea of having some type of emergency fund for emergencies when you really need something because something has gone wrong. So, you know, I would <coughs> put this as kind of a no-brainer, and as far as the overall concept of it, uh, we, we would be in favor of doing something like that. Okay. I think it's a good idea. I think the thing you have to watch for is you put the 50000 in and it doesn't get taken up by someone saying, oh, I want five for this, which is really should come out of someone's operating budget. Right. Well, mm -hmm. They don't want to take well, it out of their operating and, budget. And think, they want to take it out of the Yeah, and I think that's why it should come through the Capital Asset Committee, and then we would determine whether or not we would bring it forward to the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee. Well, see, I think a lot of times, though, what you're not thinking about with that, Tony, is it's a good point. I agree, but and that's an emergency. So all of a sudden, what's going to happen is, oh, this has to be fixed. Something happened. Now you get a scheduled meeting of the uh, the capital asset. Then you're going to make a decision. Then you get a scheduled tribal meeting. If it's truly an emergency, usually things with emergencies need to be taken care of in, in a quick amount of time. So I think. It should automatically go to the, a tri board meeting. A tri board meeting. Right. right away. You know what I mean? Because but I who, would the, who would the initial emergency complaint or request come from? Call town manager. Perfect. You know, yeah. they said, call and find out, hey, listen, we got a problem. You call us, we, we put it together, tri board meeting within, you know, you got to give a 48 hour notice. Yeah. And then we all, there's enough of us here to make a quorum that we could vote on. And that way, if it's, if it's you know, because there's an emergency, it's not going to take three weeks to get meetings together to get this record right. time. I agree. I'm, in, I'm okay with that. You have, your, you have your marching orders to check with Adam to see if we could come up with some language that would convey those, uh, those thoughts. And do we have the 50,000 today to put into it for this year's budget? Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Now's the time to talk about it because we're going through budgets. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Which is a good tip. Um, all right. Anything else, guys? I'm good with that. I think I, think I like that idea. I think it's a good idea. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming out. I'd like to close your meeting. Their meeting. Finance is actually going to hang out after you present the budget. So yeah. We're closing. I move to adjourn okay. our meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Oh, that's right. Thank you. Aye. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Hey guys. So, Colin, yes. Does the finance committee don't we have a reserve fund that only we can authorize? You do, um, not in this fiscal year. It wasn't funded because it was one of the items pulled back. Okay. In the, um, All right, so that wouldn't work. Right. Okay. I was trying to find the bylaws. Okay, so so we got a little out of order here. So our first, yeah, the first thing on the agenda was actually to review and approve minutes from the last three meetings, which I had sent out. I read those. I read and um, Michelle, I can make a motion to approve the meetings for 12, 5, 23, 10, 3, 23, and 9, 5, 23, respectively. And is there a second? A second. Okay. Um, uh, everyone in favor of approving minutes? Uh, signified, uh, signified by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 
Abstain. Okay. Minutes are approved. So pull for those as necessary. Okay. Citizens time we've done. So uh, we are on to the town manager's recommended budget. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, I know there's a lot of information that I shared late last week. In front of you is the printed version of the budget, so you don't have to strain your eyes on the screen, but I'm going to go through a presentation that I think gives a really good high-level presentation, and then I can dive into any details that you want to see as well. And I will just remind folks that there's a tri-board meeting on April 8th, so we'll have the final budget at that point. The legislators will be there, um, but I don't expect that this will change much before then. And stop me at any point with questions. Um, quickly, just talking about the budget approach, this year we use the same approach that we've used in years past. We take a very conservative approach at estimating our revenues, which helps us maintain a healthy free cash balance and also prevents us from finding ourselves, unfortunately, in similar situations that our neighboring communities are in. At this point, all of our neighbors, with the exception of maybe one, are looking at having to do operational overrides. The positive thing coming out of today's meeting is that we're not looking at an override in fiscal 25, we're really fiscal 26. Um, and then what we do is, using that revenue, meet with department heads to say, what do you need to maintain the same level of service that you've been providing? If there was an unlimited budget, what else would you like to add? And then we work backwards and say, well, we don't have the money to give everybody everything they wanted, but given the way that the town has grown, where can we make investments? And we've done this over the last five years in a very conservative way, and so you'll see that my approach this year includes a couple of minor new investments, things that match the needs of the community without overburdening our tax levy, which as this committee is well aware, we can only increase 2.5% every year plus new growth. So the process started in November when we asked departments to start putting their budget together, and they were due by December 21st. Um, Kat, myself, and our finance director, Dave Andrews, met with the departments multiple times to refine their requests and come up with what you're seeing this evening. The select board has seen this presentation twice now. We presented our initial budget uh, at the end of January, and then we've had some revisions, positive revisions, um, that they saw at their last meeting. So first, starting with revenue. The way that we look at revenue, we work with the assessor's office, the finance department, our economic development staff, the building commissioner, and our office to talk about what is in the pipeline, what are new projects. Obviously, a big one right now that everyone can see is the Toll Brothers project. And we also look at what's in the pipeline through the planning board, what kind of building permits have been pulled, what is the trend on building permits. And we look back the last five years and try our best to equalize all of this so that we have a very good idea of where we're landing. We also analyze the current fiscal year trends. I sent out um, in the packet a copy of the trends, which I can talk more about if that would be of interest. We're tracking positively on nearly all of the categories. Overall, when you look at where we're trending, we're trending about $120,000 above what we projected. Some categories are a little bit lower, but some are a lot higher. A great example is our meals tax is substantially higher this year than we budgeted for, largely due to Tavern in the Square coming online, Epigram, Modest Roots. Those three restaurants are, re are really representing like the largest increase in the excise tax. Because of that, we did amend our projections for next fiscal year. Very conservatively, we also expect at least one more restaurant to come online in the next year at the 440 Middlesex Road Plaza. So that's one area where we, we saw some change. We also are projecting a slight, and I emphasize slight, bump in the cannabis excise. Um, as this board is likely aware, the select board authorized at the end of the summer a second host community agreement for what was formerly known as the Yellow House. Ironically enough, the company is called the Yellow House Cannabis. We expect that they'll be online at least for half of fiscal year 25. On the same time, Nature's Remedy, the town's existing cannabis facility, is far exceeding what we've projected. We don't expect that we'll see it double. You know, we don't see the cannabis excise double because naturally those two being right across the street from each other will just steal business, but there will certainly be a boom when the new entity opens up. Um, and 25% of that goes into the general fund revenues. As you know, 75% of it right now, not included in our trends, goes into the road stabilization fund. The other big area that we look at and where the assessor's office and our economic development staff come in handy is anticipating what our new growth will be. We talked about the 2.5% increase. That's easy to calculate once the assessors do the hard work of valuing all of the properties. We can add 2.5% to that. The new growth is a little bit difficult or because a little bit more difficult because we're trying to project what new things will come online. Even more difficult 
in order for the assessor's office to justify this in November when they do the tax rate recap, we really have to have experienced that new growth before June 30th of the preceding fiscal year. So even though we fully expect that, for instance, Toll Brothers will be fully built out in fiscal 25, the only thing that we can really point to when the assessors submit their tax rate recap is anything that we've seen physically happen that we can prove by June 30th. So that reduces what we're estimating for new growth. In years past, we've used the standard $400,000 number. And what ends up happening in November is between the assessor's office and our finance department, we're moving things around to reflect what the actual new growth was because we never really hit that 400000 And so in an effort to be more factual and also have a better idea of what our actual financial picture is, for this budget, we're only factoring in $250,000 of new growth. And then we consider other factors that play into different revenue streams. For instance, um, two meetings ago, the select board for the first time in 15 years adjusted the building permit fees. The timing is convenient because Toll Brothers is now really full steam ahead applying for building permits. So we bumped up what we expect to get for revenue in that category simply because those fees increased. Just as a visual representation of where the money comes from, 34.5 million is from the levy limit. That's the money we collect in property taxes. That includes the 2.5% plus our estimated new growth. Local receipts, those are things that we collect in terms of excise tax, the can um, cannabis excise, meals tax, net state aid, which we'll have a slide on. That's the amount of money we get from the state minus what they take back from us in assessments. So it's, it's a balancing game with them. And then other available sources, this largely includes the Monitor's back up. Yep, yeah. uh, yeah, monitor's back up. We're back. Okay, unfortunately, I've lost the. Oh, no, we're good. All right, we'll just give that a second to power back up. I'm gonna have Kat run back to the office and print five copies of this just in case this keeps powering up so that we don't have to sit here waiting. Make copies, Colin? Yeah, she's gonna go. All right, we'll take a break. Oh, oh, actually, oh, hold on. No, we're back. Yeah, we're back up. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Kat. All right. Oh, let's try that again. And for those listening, we had a power outage, so that uh, we had to wait for everything to come back up online. But I think we are we are back up and running. Vision five seven. Still trying to connect. Can you use your headphone just to Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's being on. So we ready? It's not connecting. Oh. She's gonna run down and get the oh wait, we might be good. I think cat's printing it. 
So what we can do while waiting for that is we can jump to the next agenda item and jump back. Um, I think we got right. it. Sorry. <laughs> okay. All right, now that I've kept you all waiting, I will return to my pie charts. This is just a visual, visual representation of the funding sources that I told you about. Obviously, Tingsboro is largely dependent on its tax levy. And on the other side of the screen, um, this is something that the select board certainly sees every year when the assessors come in November for the tax rate recap. Tingsboro's tax base is obviously heavily residential as well. I won't spend too much time on this slide, um, but this represents the breakdown of the revenue that we're forecasting, just under 50, uh, 48 million, 47.9 million, and it shows the different categories. In your, what I shared with you on uh, Friday, it has the same information, but it includes prior year actuals, and it includes the trending for this fiscal year as well. So you can see where we've, and then we, to make it super simple, the green box shows that we're on track, and a red box shows that we're monitoring it because we're slightly below. Question, keep that up. Um, yes. Rentals. Yes. What does that consist of? Is that like the town hall first parish meeting house? No, those go directly into revolving fund. This rental um, largely includes the billboard revenue. Okay. I'm just curious on, on those buildings, how much, if, if it was on there. No, those go directly into, we can get that number, those go directly into a revolving fund that only can be spent on those buildings, not including the general fund. All right, I talked about a lot of these, so I will just highlight what we're including in our new growth estimate. Roughly $160,000 from Toll Brothers. Again, realizing that it's because we have to have experienced the new growth by June 30th. So we'll certainly see more than $160,000 next fiscal year, but in order for us to justify to the state, we have to have seen it by June 30th. The affordable units on that same project, about $68,000. Um, 45 Middlesex Road building improvements, roughly $21,000. And then there's a little bit left from Washville's Car Wash and Epigram Brewery. We did experience most of that in fiscal year 24, but the timing on when they were completed uh, will experience just a small amount here in fiscal 25. We talked about the meals tax and the canvas, as well as the building permit fees. One note that I'd make for this group is that the sewer commission operates an enterprise fund. However, we charge them back through indirect costs for the town's um, health insurance, uh, administrative expenses for us doing payroll. Generally, year over year, what we do is balance what the actual indirect costs were with what they budgeted, and their budget is based on a percentage of their operating budget, what that, or of their, through the enterprise fund. That ends up not working well for us because they always include things like big capital projects in their budget, even though they don't see them happen that year. So a great example is the sewer garage bays. They've had $300,000 in their enterprise fund budget every year for the last two fiscal years, but they haven't used it. So when we close out the year, the percentage actually comes down because that money remains unspent. And so what that means is we technically aren't collecting the full amount from them. Over the last two years, we haven't balanced it, so we essentially owe them $91,000. So their direct reimbursement to the general fund is reduced by $93,000 this year to make up for prior years not balancing it. All right, state aid. We are still super early in this process. Um, Governor Healy filed her fiscal 25 budget proposal on January 22nd. It included a $68,000 decrease in our state aid. However, the positive piece is that it included a increase, I'm sorry, it included a decrease in the assessments, which is what we pay the state. So our net is a positive, which is good. The uncertainty, obviously, is that this still hasn't made it through the House or the Senate. One of the things we know from past experience is that while this number sometimes will change, generally at the legislative level, it will change in our favor because the legislators have a more direct reason to make our state aid numbers better for us, whereas the governor's constituency is the entire state. There's less uh, politics at play, if you will. So our budget that you're seeing tonight is based off of this state aid projection. Looking back the last three years, the number hasn't gone in the opposite direction for us once the legislature touches it. But this is, again, something that we'll talk to the, the legislators with on April 8th at the tri-board meeting. 
this is just an overview of our current stabilization fund with just about $3 million in general, $625,000 in capital, $17,000 in the billboard. Special Ed has $134,000. And the road maintenance, which we talked about, that's where 75% of the cannabis excise has been going. That's at about $1.1 million right now. I would also note that this number doesn't include any of the deposits that were supposed to be made at May annual town meeting because free cash wasn't certified. So the article that you see this year will have higher than normal stabilization deposits because we're really playing catch up for last year, not making the deposits. I did just want to quickly highlight that we do very well with grants in fiscal 2024. To date, we've received more than $3.9 million in grants. I've listed a variety of the grants on this slide. I won't cover them all, obviously. A notable one is the $2 million Mass Works grant, which is funding public and private development at the highway garage, $400,000 to our Board of Health for their regional public health grant. Another big one, the Sewer Commission does tremendously well with federal earmarks. They have $869,000. And then I also wanted to point out that there's no grant too small for us to apply for. We get some grants here. We've got one listed for $15,000. We got a, a cybersecurity one for like $1,375. Anytime there's money available to the town, we take advantage of it. And it's obviously evident in, in what we're doing. This is things that we're able to do on top of the operating budget. And so this really ends up being a huge, you, know, you look at the town center, a lot of the work that we did there was funded by CPC, but a lot of the local matches came in the form uh, or a lot of the additional funds came in the form of grants from the state. The Footbridge project is funded by a $300,000 Mass Works um, housing choice grant. And anytime we can get money, we're, we're seeking them. So we're trying to rely as much as we can on outside funds, knowing that our budget is pretty tight. All right, the exciting part of the presentation is the general fund expenditures. This slide is a little bit interesting only because it shows the differences between when I first presented the budget to the select board and what you're seeing this evening. And for comparison purposes, I have the fiscal 24 budget here, which was $46.2 million. In fiscal 25, uh, my current recommendation, which is the last column here, 226.24. On the education side, I'm recommending $25.1 million. On the town side, it's $16.8 million total of $47.6 million. The difference here is the difference between the two budgets. So since January, the budget recommendation for fiscal 25 has gone down $323,000. Comparing to fiscal 2024, it's a $1.4 million increase or just about a 3.1% increase over the last year. Now this budget does include certain assumptions because it's still early. Um, this includes a 2.7% increase in the school department budget. We've met with the school administration. My understanding is they presented their budget to finance committee, I think, last week. And they are sticking to that 2.7%. That's the number that the tribe board agreed on in order to allow the town to also commit a million dollars every year to the middle school debt. So their budget that they've presented comes in exactly at the 2.7%. Um, some of this information has changed when we made our first presentation. So I'll, I'll go back here. We received a lower estimate from Greater Lowell Tech than we previously included. That's, that was a big chunk of the decrease from my first pass of this budget, and that's tied simply to our enrollment. The Greater Lowell School Committee hasn't voted on their budget yet, so they make a big deal of saying that this is just their estimate. But at this time last year, we used their estimate for the budget, and that's where we landed. Um, they'll be before the select board on March 25th presenting their budget, so I expect by then we'll have a firm number, but they have indicated they don't expect that to change. Another area where we spend a lot of time worrying is health insurance. Health insurance costs are generally through the roof. We were very fortunate this year. Our original budget included an assumption of a 10% increase, and that's based on the information we get from the insurance company. However, we got our rates three weeks ago, and the increase is roughly 5%, um, which is a huge, huge benefit. We're looking at some of the communities that were in the trust that we were in before we left to go to Maya, I think four years ago now. They're looking at 12 and 13% increases. And that's not just on the town's budget, that's also on the employee as well. So this is a win-win for everybody. I do want to note that we still have um, five labor contracts that haven't been settled for fiscal 25. However, the budget that you're seeing includes an assumption of a 2.5% increase on all labor contracts. So it's not like we didn't plan for it, that money is in there. We were able to settle the highway contract, that came in right at what we budgeted, so I feel good about the remaining ones. 
But obviously, until we settle those contracts, that's subject to change. And then when we look at the actual departments, I did just want to note that one of the organizational changes we made is moving all of our custodial positions into the highway salary line. Right now, there's some that are paid three hours out of the Council on Aging's budget, six hours out of the Police Department's budget. Not only is it confusing when you look at the budget, it makes payroll tremendously difficult. Their pay stub essentially includes three different line items, which makes zero sense. Um, so their salary line item looks like it's gone up quite a bit, but it's really just because we've added positions into it. They're all in the same union, so it just made sense for us to keep everyone together. All right. These are some requests. Like I said, we asked departments not to just tell us what they need to level fund, but we asked them to tell us what would be nice if they could. And so on the expense side, there were several items from the information technology department that we chose not to fund. Two of them are because we are eligible for and have already in one case received grants to cover the costs. That would be in the cyber incident response plan. The social media archiving is really something that we can do in-house if we chose to. There are community um, compact and best practices grants available, so we didn't recommend that being included. The police department has, I think this is the second year, looked at trying to bring a third party IT vendor in that would solely do their IT. They're certainly in a slightly different category than most of our town hall departments. They're a 24-7 operation. Their dispatch center needs to be available 24-7. For $34,000, we would have had a third party that did their IT support. There's two reasons leading me to not recommend that in my budget. One being on a future slide, you'll see that I'm recommending making a, an existing part-time IT employee full-time. And so we are increasing the resources on the town level anyway. The other piece is when we look at the tickets that they submit for tech support, most of the issues they run into are on the software side, for which we already pay software support agreements to these other companies. This would essentially, for $34,000, add a middleman that would then communicate with the software support that we're already paying for. And so in a tough budget year, it wasn't <coughs> something that I could recommend. The other thing we didn't include, the police department was looking for two new cruiser leases this year. Because of the availability of ARPA, particularly early on, the town was very generous with police cruiser leases. And so I've eliminated one of those cruiser leases. Our fleet is in tremendous condition. Um, the police department probably would not agree with that assessment. But the budget that I am presenting does include one new lease. So we are still maintaining the vehicles. Um, we just couldn't afford a second lease at this time. On top of the expenses, there were positions that were asked for that we aren't including this year. On the police department, um, they're looking for $23,000 for a part-time records clerk, which I'm not recommending, $63,000 for a new patrol officer, which I'm not recommending. And the fire department want, um, has requested, really to start the conversation, a full-time fire inspector position. I've spoken to the fire chief, and there are staff within the department that we're able to utilize by doing some structural changes to do this work. On the patrol officer side, um, our staffing is very comparable to other communities our size, and their, their budget represents our, our largest town side budget. In this fiscal 25, even though the, the picture is positive, one of the things that we have to be cognizant of is anything we add in fiscal 25 becomes a liability in fiscal 26, which is when we'll all start to really feel the impact of the middle school borrowing. And so in the interest of being conservative and protecting the town's position, these are not ones that I've recommended. Now there are some new items. This is that conservative um, investment approach that I've talked about. I mentioned, um, working my way from the top actually, the fire department has had, in fiscal 23, we provided the fire department with $24,000 for part-time admin support. They're the only department we have here at Town Hall that's a multi-person department that doesn't have any clerical support. So right now the chief does payroll. He has a firefighter that helps with um, entering their AP and other expense related items. In fiscal 24, at the last minute, my understanding is there were a bunch of cuts that had to be made before we went to town meeting and this was one of them. This is, it is very rare that a department this size doesn't have administrative support. And so we felt like this was an important thing to put back in the budget. The roads budget, we've been trying over the last five years to increase the operating contribution to roads by 50,000. And in the fiscal 24 budget, that was the plan. It was also one of the items at the last minute that was cut from the budget. And so 
really this year we should be a hundred thousand dollars above where we were in fiscal 24 if we had included that 50 but in the interest of protecting the town I'm looking to just increase it by 50,000 the highway department has forever had a part-time administrative assistant um, this budget includes ten thousand dollars to make that a full-time position the highway department has been asked to do more and more the Department of Public Works Act which passed town meeting last year is working its way through the legislature and the plan was always that we would have increased support over there so for ten thousand dollars to bring the highway department up to speed with other departments in town its size um, was a wise choice in my opinion and then finally we did talk about the IT support specialist currently Question. we have um, yep ten thousand dollar increase so how many hours are they working now part-time right now they're 28 and our full-time is 34 oh. so this goes to the 34. okay i was gonna say i, I gotta go i'm thinking 20 to 40 for ten thousand that's yeah no no so you're, you're giving them enough to make the in fact now does that also come, come with all the benefits too right yes because we have to offer benefits at 19 so at 28 this employee was already benefits eligible benefits. And, yeah so, okay I thought, I thought it was 32 that you had to give benefits. So you had 19? 19. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other new, the other increase is $13,000 to increase the part-time IT support specialist. We had our IT director here at the select board meeting to talk about the current situation with cybersecurity and the demands on our IT infrastructure. This is a no-brainer. It's something that we've been trying to do. Last year, we looked at a partnership with the town of Dunstable to share the services so that they would bear some of the cost. They ended up choosing not to do that. Um, we're able to minimize the impact on the operating budget thanks to the kindness of the PEG Enterprise Fund. They're going to fund $10,000 of that increase so that we can also have that employee cross-train to help with media coverage if there's a, you know, if we have an immediate associate missing, uh, not missing, absent. And um, this will also alleviate some of the concerns on the police department. Right now, the IT director is the only full-time employee, so if at 3 in the morning, there's a computer issue over there every time it's the IT director that has to respond this will allow us to divide the coverage split their shifts so that there's always an IT person in this building and available to support um, they support town hall the library the fire the police and the highway department and council on aging the other budget drivers to keep in mind and and why the budget looks high in some places trash and recycling is on the rise everywhere um, right now, if we stick with Republic Services, we're looking at a 5.7% increase. One of the things we've done proactively is meet with other trash vendors. The landscape is relatively similar. However, there are some vendors that have had to make substantial investments in their fleet to pick up smaller communities, and so they have capacity without all of the upfront costs that would require them to have a big increase. And so we have one proposal that we're looking at right now that we're able to compare with Republic in a worst case scenario, we would stay with Republic and see this 5.7% increase, but we're hopeful that, not to go into my strategy on a public meeting, but either the new vendor will be able to come in lower or we'll be able to leverage the pricing we get from the new vendor to bring Republic down in certain areas. The fire department has two, two areas that are the result of budgeting mistakes. They're one of the two departments where an employee gets paid differently for holiday pay because even on Christmas there's firefighters working. So instead of on this side, on Christmas, Kat and I just don't show up and we just collect our regular salary. In these departments, we have to budget for that holiday pay because they get it as a payment as opposed to um, just the day off. That hasn't been done correctly. And so when we ran the trend data for their expenses this year, in order to correct that so that we're not having to do substantial year end transfers at the end of the coming fiscal year, it looks like a 102% increase. This isn't an increase in salaries. People aren't getting paid anymore. Their contract is already settled. This is just to reflect the fact that in May, I'll be asking the select board and the finance committee to approve transfers somewhere in this amount to correct a budgeting issue in the fiscal 24 budget. So I don't want people to see that in their salary line item and think, oh my goodness. I suppose they didn't notice in their paychecks. They're getting paid correctly. At the end of the year, though, we have a budget deficit because we paid them correctly, but we didn't budget the money correctly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, software costs right now are increasing tremendously. So in the software and the IT budget, you're seeing a 35% increase. And then because I am including a new cruiser in the police department, that's a 24% increase. I won't spend much time on this, but health insurance is obviously one of our big costs, and, and the select board wanted to see what that breakdown looks like. The town's operating budget, the budget you're seeing tonight, covers 100% of the costs for health insurance, but it represents, uh, of the breakdown here, 
27% of that is for town side employees, where 73% is on the school side. Pay, we pay 100%? Correct. Family plan too? No, no, I'm sorry. We pay 100% of our health insurance costs, meaning that the school department doesn't budget for health insurance for their employees. The town does a 70-30 split for an employee. Before I go into the breakdown of the budget, did anybody have questions on any of the new items, things that I didn't recommend? No? Okay. As Mr. Crawford alluded to, the select board really wanted to demonstrate where the taxpayer money goes, and so what we did is develop categories of spending, general government, land use, public works, public safety, health and human services, education, and debt service. General government is like, I think of it as the backbone of town hall. It's behind the scenes, but also it's the people that you interact with when you come in here to do f simple functions like pay a tax bill, register your dog, get a marriage license, et cetera. There are also um, expense services. So town council, obviously, it's under the purview of the select board. That fell under general government, town reports, and personnel as well. These are the core, the core departments. This category represents 7.61% of the operating budget and includes 21 and a half full-time employees, which represents about 6.5% of our overall workforce. And you can see that I've broken down within general government where the expenses are going, 1.6 to salary, 1.3 to expenses, health insurance, retirement, and then the budget total is 3.6. Land use and community development, these are the folks that do your permitting and help bring development to town, so the Building Department, Conservation Planning, and Zoning Board of Appeals. It represents 1.28% of the budget with six full-time employees, which is 1.8% of the workforce. Similar breakdown here, um, totaling $606,000. And I will note that we looked at um, fiscal 24, fiscal 23, and fiscal 22. While the dollar amounts change, the actual percent breakdown has always been relatively the same. We haven't really changed the way that we fund our operations. Public works is exactly what you think of public works. Think infrastructure, including public buildings, street lighting, stormwater, snow and ice, all of our physical assets. 12.75 full-time employees, which represents 3.8% of our workforce. Total budget is 2.4 million, which represents 5.1% of our actual operating budget. One thing I wanted to note on health insurance, we don't have enrollment data for fiscal 25, so these numbers will fluctuate a little bit. This is based on the number of people enrolled in a family plan this year, number of people enrolled in a single family plan, or a single plan. Public safety is an obvious one. I will note here that that also includes um, animal control, which right now we contract with the town of Chelmsford, communications, which is our dispatch, and emergency management, which is kind of a subdivision of the fire department. We also budget separately the school resource officer because we collect the salary portion. We get reimbursed from the schools where those officers are stationed, Greater Lowell Tech, um, and to an extent, Innovation Academy. In public safety, there are 44.5 full-time employees, which represents 13.4% of our workforce. Their operating budget totals 7.2 million, and that represents 15% of the town's overall operating budget. Health and Human Services, those are people that provide critical human services to the community, promote public health, and engage the community in recreation and community building. There are 7.25 full-time employees, 2.2% of the workforce. The budget total is 2.4 million, which represents 4.9% of our overall budget. Education, I wanna just put a note here that that entire category is not just the Tingsboro Public Schools, it also is the assessment we pay to Greater Lowell Tech. Again, that's based on the number of students enrolled. There are other educational expenses that are reflected in our state assessment. So for instance, we get charged, um, they call it charter school reimbursement, but it comes out of the money we're getting from the state, so it doesn't show up cleanly on our operating budget because we're never writing Innovation Academy a check. Essentially, the state is just deducting our school aid based on how many of our students are enrolled at, at Innovation. Also worth noting that this full-time employee count doesn't include the employees at Greater Lowell Tech. We pay them essentially like a contractor. They give us invoices. We pay them for educating our share of their students. So the 
employee count here is from the Tingsboro Public Schools. So they, they represent 72.3% of our workforce. They have 240 full-time employees. And the percent of our operating budget is 64%. So 64% of our operating budget goes to education. L slightly less than 2% of that is the Greater Lowell Tech Assessment. So about 62% of our budget goes directly to the schools. And this includes the breakdown of health insurance, which as I noted, in the operating budget that you see at town meeting, it's all born in the town side, the general fund. The debt slide, this is just broken down by exempt and non-exempt. Your exempt debt is similar to what the middle school will be. That's the debt that's on top of the tax levy. Currently, there's still our debt service for fiscal 25 is 322,000 for the exempt debt. That represents the final payments on the Tingsboro Elementary School and the high school roof and boiler replacement. Non-exempt, there are various capital projects. Almost all of those are completely paid off by fiscal year 2027, and that's $560,000. And then finally, this is just the visual summary of all the words that I just used. Shows that in total, 64% is education, general government 7.6, and you can see the other categories here. And just for curiosity's sake, we did a visual presentation of where our employees work. Again, 72% uh, are at the schools, and then the rest are in various departments that are covered by the town's operating budget. Quickly, just wanted to highlight the enterprise funds. Sewer Enterprise, as you know, falls under the purview of the sewer commissioners. Um, this is their fiscal 25 budget. It's $3.7 million. Uh, they're showing here their revenue sources. It comes in a mix from residential user fees, commercial user fees, miscellaneous fees, covenants, betterments, and their retained earnings. The Ambulance Enterprise Fund, uh, the fiscal 25 recommended budget is $671,000. The Ambulance Enterprise Fund is also seeing some of those increases that were based on the, the bad budgeting, I guess I'll say. Several of the positions are funded partially out of the fire department's budget and partially out of the ambulance enterprise. So any increase we had to do to correct the budget on the fire side, we had to do in the ambulance enterprise as well. So are we funding that now? Or is it? No, this is completely from there. This is out. I'm, I've left the operating budget. This is from their revenues. Right. So the ambulance enterprise fund right now is not, it's fully funded? Yes. In fact, they closed last fiscal year with $69,000 in retained earnings. 10 cents is plenty. Absolutely. And except for the ambulance with Bob. Oh, correct. Oh, that include that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did that cost? Uh, 300. We didn't pay all of that though. They no. shared. Yeah. They shared. <laughs> um, and then our current trends have the enterprise fund adding another $30,000 in their retained earnings, meaning that they'll close this year's books $30,000 in the positive. And then finally, the PEG Enterprise Fund. <clears throat> Their fiscal 25 recommended budget is $185,279. Again, this is outside of the operating budget. This is funded with the revenues from Comcast and Verizon. And the FY25 request includes $40,000 of capital items, which will fund the installation of two additional video monitors here in this room. And it will also result in the upgrade of cameras. I don't know if any of you have watched a meeting in the kitchen. Um, my budget, because this is just their operations, I think that they still have somewhere in the $700,000 bar par ballpark. It's still sitting there. Still sitting there, yep. It can't be used for anything other than a PEG building. That was what yes. the town meeting vote was. I know, because we talked about putting the, um, the rec building that's over yep. by the mobile on the run into a PEG building. Correct. And then that gets squashed, and I'm just curious what happened. Yeah, no, that money stayed there. Can't be used for, for anything else. Are we ever going to build a PEG center, really? Something that we've talked about, one of the things that we're seeing and that we're, we're looking at with Roni's expertise is that the revenues are declining. People aren't paying for cable anymore. They're streaming. There are a couple of bills at the legislature that would basically apply a similar fee to internet bills that you pay right now on the cable side. If that doesn't go through, we are seeing communities scaling back what have become in bigger communities really widespread, like wide scale media operations. In Tingsboro, we've really focused on the core of PEG, which is providing access to government meetings, education, collaborating with other communities. I think that as we see how other places are 
changing. A lot of places went out on their own and became nonprofits, and now it's not sustainable because the revenues are down, and so they're looking to get back under the town's umbrella. A lot of that landscape change will help guide our discussions on what a peg center needs, essentially. But the money is there. It's ready to go. There's no... That's a good point because, I mean, I know I used to watch it on Channel 8, but I cut, I cut the cord. Things around May.gov, you click online meetings, you can watch it live and on demand. I think that's what a lot of people are doing. So whether that bill passes or not, I'm not sure, but we've been very cognizant of it. And because we've really focused on providing those core media services, we're not seeing the impact in the same way that some places that just finished $30 million studio renovations that include a kitchen set and a woodworking set are now having to, to grapple with. Well, thank you. Of course. On the school slide, I'm trying to decide if I understand something. What was the total budget number? 30.3 million. And that's for 25? Yes. If you're comparing this though to previous slides, it's not totally accurate because we've here thrown in as a visual representation our share of the health insurance that really is for school employees. So on this chart, does this include health insurance? It does, but not in the school's budget. Uh -huh. That's where the confusing, and also I will note, what we tried to do with this was take all of the shared expenses, liability insurance, workers' comp, retirement, health insurance. It's represented correctly in terms of how town meeting will see it on the sheet you just picked up. But what that doesn't tell people is how much are you really spending in these different categories? That's what these slides did. So their budget request is in 30 million. We're spending 30 million. Right. It's just represented differently in the town meeting budget because we've never, most places don't do chargebacks to the school department, if that makes sense. This was meant really just to show people, you know, we're spending 47 million of your tax dollars. Where is it actually going? Okay. That does clear it up. Perfect. Other questions? Okay. Uh, awesome. Thank you. Of course. All right. Um, all right. Down the list here discussion planning of upcoming finance committee meetings. So um, should we have one before town meeting? You think we need one? We should have one before town meeting because we have to go over anything else that needs to be taken care of. There certainly will be a, like I said, April 8th, a tri board meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that there, I, I can't foresee a need for an additional meeting beyond that. We will need to schedule a meeting at some point after town meeting to do the year end transfers, which is a standard. Item. I think last year you did them in early July, though. I think. When is the election? May. May twenty first. May twenty first. Okay. And the Warren articles will be available. Oh yes, that's a good point. Yes. Warren articles will be available. The deadline to submit them to the town clerk is April eighth. Give a week or two for town for town council to review if they're citizen petitions. Otherwise, the select board will post the warrant on April 22nd. So somewhere in the April 22nd range, um, the committee will need to meet this right to vote to their recommendations right. on them. Yes. Um, because um, I know Marie is not going to be running, and I want to say I appreciate all the years she spent, and I don't know if you've decided yet. Yeah, I'm not going to run. All right, so <clears throat> we have to get a meeting between the warrant articles and the election. The, the, the town meeting is after the election, correct? Now, right? Because these. No, town meeting is before the election. Before the election, yes. Town meeting is on the seventh. Okay. I, yeah, that's right. We, we, we reversed it. We reversed yep. what it used to be. Right. All right. So. So we've got the tri board on the eighth. And on so the so we so we need to vote on the warrant articles before April twenty second. Is that correct? No, um, no, you could do it the next day, April twenty third. 
we have to produce your finance committee guidebook, which includes your vote, just seven days before town meeting. So if you did, if you met the week of the 22nd to review the articles, they'll have been finalized on Monday the 22nd. That would give us time to incorporate your votes we'll into the 23rd. I mean, 22nd to 24th. So, so the 23rd is a Tuesday. Um, will Tuesday the 23rd work for everybody? Um, I think I have conservation this, this. I can tell you. First and third. That's like, I usually have meetings of conservation on a Tuesday. Okay. And that is usually a long meeting. <coughs> How about the 22nd? That's an idea, that's an idea approving them. Okay. That's Monday. Right, so we need to. And that's, the, the selectmen will be in here that night usually. Yeah. All right. Uh, 24th. So, that's what I'm saying, Wednesday the 24th. All right, will Wednesday the 24th work for everybody? That gives us a couple of days to look at them anyway. <laughs> okay. And if we have any questions on them. School building committee has a meeting that night, so I don't know. Is that over at the school? That's over at the school. <clears throat> Wednesday, 24th. Yeah, so we'll go for the 24th Wednesday at 6.30. That seems to be. Am I used to going to those, are you still going to those building committee meetings? You've been going no, to I was never on the so committee. I, I never got you say something put about on the committee. Uh, March 25th. Yeah, we could put you on like a year ago. Uh, Greater yeah, but Colin said we have yes, on March 25th. The finance committee do you remember that meeting where when they do their budget presentation? Oh. Yeah. Um, th in the past, they've done it on the same night as tri board. The scheduling didn't work, uh -huh. so we've never done it at so that that has happened in the past. Mm -hmm. It's not something that we like have required. Certainly, the okay. finance committee is invited to attend. In fact, on the 25th, the Tingsborough Public Schools will present their budget, which yeah. you've seen, I think. Um, Greater Lowell Tech will present their budget. Innovation comes every year. Mm -hmm. Their budget, like I noted, is slightly different, but they do talk about what they spend and what they do in the community. So it would be a interesting meeting to attend if you wanted to. Okay. Okay. Other new business. Just want to get the vote for that meeting. All right. Just get, so you scheduled to twenty. Yeah, so, 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 so we're good for the 8th and the um, 24th. Yeah, the 8th is a tri board, and then we'll meet on Wednesday, April 24th. Eight. When do we schedule CPC? That's next. 13th, next Wednesday. So the 8th is like a couple days, right? When is the 8th? Three, four weeks? Yeah. April 8th. Yeah, April 8th. The tri board, okay. I thought you said March 8th. I'm like, wait a second. Oh my goodness, no. Away. Getting my dates all. Right. Second Tuesday. What time is that tri board? 6 p.m. 6 o'clock usually, yeah. So they are going to be losing Marie and Stan Marie. How, how long have you been on this committee? Ooh. At least six years. Six years. Yeah. Holy moly. Yeah. Well, on I'm behalf of the town of Tingsboro, mm. thank you very, very much. Yes, we're all going to miss you. Uh, we, we will, absolutely. Yes, I, I thought it was time to give somebody else a chance to do that. Trying to do away with the night meetings. <laughs> okay. All right. So motion to adjourn? Um, well, let me say, Stan, thank you very much for, for your help, too. Short for briefer time, time but, 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 but thank you nonetheless. And um, yeah, can we get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. Uh, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Um, have an awesome night.